Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, Timothy, unto the church of the Thessalonians, in God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not an earthly location. It's not talking about a church building. In Thessalonica he's talking about the body of Christ that's in God grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ we are bound to thank God always for you Paul's always praying Paul's always seeking the church in his prayers thanking him praying for him as it is meet that means appropriate fit because that your faith groweth exceedingly now we just study first thessalonians as a church that is right and is proper the second book of thessalonians they are improving more as paul wrote them remember i told you you know you guys show love and charity show more and between first thessalonians and second thessalonians that's exactly what's happened there is no middle line they are climbing they are improving. And the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. That's great quantity. They are maturing and they are ripening. And they're producing other fruit. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 through 13. So that we ourselves, Paul, glory in you in the churches of God, not church of God, Churches of God. You know how God, how God did that? There's a false religion out there, Church of God. But, you know, they didn't call themselves the Churches of God. The Churches of God for your patience, spoke about in 1 Thessalonians, and faith, spoke about in 1 Thessalonians, in all your persecution and tribulations that ye endure. So this church is going through problems. It's going through uh, persecutions. It's having trials. It's having tri tribulation. And they're enduring. And they are growing. They are maturing. Through the, the, the troubles and the problems. And Paul is, is pleased with their servant. Paul is happy with their work. Which is manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Now token in the Old Testament was somebody... Uh, they needed money. They would give uh, their blanket. The Bible spoke of as a token, uh, a jacket, and it's like a down payment. It's it's an evidence. Today, uh, when you get a loan, I could, as soon as I said that, it went right out of my mouth. Well, you give um, collateral. This is your evidence. This is your token. This is what you are showing that you have of the righteous judgment of God. So God judges righteous. That ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Now get this. For which ye also suffer. Suffering brings realm. Brings reigning. You suffer with Christ. You're going to get some kind of reign when Jesus Christ is on this earth for the millennium. 2 Timothy 2.12 The 
The reward is coming. Endure, verse four. What, what, what should, what would be the reason why you should endure? Because you're going to be worthy of the kingdom of God. There's something coming for you. It ain't just you ain't not just going through persecution and tribulations just for the heck of it. There's a reason. There's a reward. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Now we're going to turn the table. Now we're going to look at the other side of the coin. You're being persecuted. You're being in tribulation. Those people that are doing it, here's what God has to say. Here's what Paul is directing people who are enemy of God. Now remember when Paul was on the road to Damascus. And Jesus spoke to him. He says, why persecutest thou me? Now, Paul never persecuted Jesus. He persecuted Christians. And so what God is doing here in chapter 1 is, okay, you're persecuting my people? This is what you're going to get. So anybody who mocks a Christian that is suffering, and causing the suffering, they have no idea if they, oh, we're going to heaven. We're re No, you're not, because watch what it says. Recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Well, they're getting persecution and tribulation. Well, God's going to give it back to them. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. That works for the lost people, too. That's not just save people. Anything a man plants, it's going to grow. The only way you're not going to get is, is, you know, suicide or early death. Or maybe God's mercy and grace. But there's going to be no mercy and grace for a lost man. Especially one that it's, it's hindering a Christian. And to you who are troubled, the church, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That is not the rapture. Because there's no angels in the rapture. We've already read the rapture in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. There's an archangel that gives a shout with Jesus. But there's no angels. And the Bible says that we will be following Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus said we are going to be equal to angels. We're not going to marry. We're not going to no longer have that. That could be us. We might be as equal to the angels. Wouldn't that be interesting? It says in the verse that we yeah. In flaming fire. Now, I'm going to tell you something before we, we, go, we finish this chapter. If you were to get a concordance, whether, uh, uh, oh boy, whether on a computer or get the book Strong's Concordance and look up hell, Paul never mentions hell. That's a remarkable fact. Paul preaches about salvation. Paul preaches about the gospel. And yet, Paul does not preach anything about H-E-L-L. -L. Okay? Jesus does. And the, and the people come to you and say, Jesus never preached about hell. And they're wrong. Well, it, it, it would be proper for them to say, Paul never preached anything about H-E-L-L. -L. Okay? Well, watch this. In flaming fire. Now you go back and read the Revelation, what, what John says about Jesus, and what Joel says about Jesus. That fire is coming out of his eyeballs. That lion is angry. There is a flame that's coming from, see, as an army behind Jesus Christ, in Joel chapter 2, is it, or 3, we don't need to do any fighting. They are going to be burnt up. In the, there's a place in the Bible that says their eyes are going to consume in their sockets. Jesus is going to be the flamethrower before we come. We're just going to march. So imagine Jesus Christ, the flamethrower. Let's call him that if I can. If I can righteously call him that. Now watch this one. When he comes to the second advent, flamethrower, flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. The unbelievers. All right, now watch this. They are burnt alive. 
Third degree burns and then they drop dead. Then they fall off into hell. They're dead. They wake up. They're in hell. They're in torments, being tormented. Torment is torments. Luke 16. They are taken out of hell, Revelation 20, and they're cast off into the lake of fire. There are three times they are burnt. Why? Because you persecuted Christians. You know, I hear people, sorry to say, they got a, a public ministry, and they make fun of the people that mock them. And they don't realize what that person is doing in their life. That person is going to be bound to triple burnings. If not, Second burning, if the Lord doesn't come during this time and they die a, a death. Well, they're going to hell and then they're going to go in the lake of fire. Two burnings. Isn't that enough? They get the second death. But when the, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes the second advent, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. That's the second advent. So let me ask you a question. In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know God. So... Some will say, well, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. Really? What's that say? Is that love? And then you go back, well, the, God wouldn't do that. And let me go back here real quick. Verse 5, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. This verse 8 is a righteous judgment. See, if you're persecuting a Christian, what do you think, and I don't know anything about odds, it's just a saying. What do you think the odds of that Christian actually doing right and living right? Pretty well good, isn't it? Probably well that Christian has told that person how to be saved and what the Bible expects from them. So as you're persecuting that Christian, the Thessalonians, the, the text and the topic here in chapter 1, they are doing right according to Paul in two books. Six chapters, this church is doing right. They are telling these people, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The gospel is Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, and they're being persecuted, hearing what these men are preaching. And they know full well the enemies of God. And they, wait a minute, and in flaming, uh, flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, isn't that interesting? So what's the Thessalonians preaching? They're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, don't you be a carnal Christian, a Christian that's asleep and say, oh, yeah, all my enemies and all that. Because, no. If you're not doing nothing for Jesus Christ, you're not preaching the gospel. This ain't going to happen to the people persecuting. You're being persecuted because you're an idiot. These men are being persecuted for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When it says that the, the souls have been be, beheaded in the book of Revelation that are under the throne, it was for the word of God. So when you're persecuted, and you want comfort by God from the people doing it. It better be because of the word of God and not because you're being an idiot. Now, I've seen videos. Or some people, I, I got rid of them off my Facebook. But they would go and preach women smoking cigarettes and men wearing having tattoos and, and sodomites and all that. They just out fat preach in their faith. They don't preach the gospel. They preach sin. That's not preaching. That's not what we're supposed to go in all the world. The, the Bible says go in all the world and 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 harass everybody because of their sins. No, that's not it. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now, when I am sitting there at the farmer's market and I'm saying, you need to be saved and this is what the gospel is. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And a guy walks up to me and says, you're stupid. All right, I'm being persecuted because of the word of God, not because of me. And that guy does not realize, you know what? He now has an enemy. It's not me. God. And God just took the very fact with Paul on the road to Damascus, you just called Jesus Christ and God and the gospel, you just called them stupid. 
You ought to be quaking in your shoes. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus, see that, shall suffer persecution. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction. That sounds like hell to me, doesn't it? He that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son sh shall not see life but the wrath of God. Now, John the Baptist didn't say hell then, but scripture was scripture. Paul didn't say H-E-L-L, -L, but everlasting destruction. What is that? Hell and the lake of fire. From the presence of the Lord. Well, you're not going to heaven. You cannot harass a Christian who's doing what the Bible says. Um, somebody who comes up and listen, I've had the street ministry, I don't know how many years. People come up to me, oh, you're not doing what the Bible, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what Jesus would do. Are you going to heaven? Yeah. No, you're not. You are persecuting, persecuting a Christian. And the Bible says God's going to take vengeance on you and you're going to leave the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of his power. It, it almost sounds like that no man who's ever trusted Christ would ever say or ever harass another Christian. No matter how bad or how lazy they get in Christ. It's just probably not there for them to say, start ranking on you, start making fun of God, start saying stuff about you, start persecuting. Because it says here, these people that have gone against the Thessalonians are going to get the flaming fire, the vengeance of God, and they're not going to be in the presence of the Lord. Now, you may be a worldly Christian, but I don't think you're going to, where the, where the scripture says, I don't think you're, if you start harassing a Christian, the marks are, the works show that, you know what, you may not be saved. That's just what the Bible says. From the present, you, can you lose your salvation? No, you can't. And these people are put out from the Lord. Because they're persecuting Christians. And from the glory of his power, there will be no power of God in hell. What's the power of God? Giving you things that you need, taking care of you, helping you, guiding you. Israel in the wilderness. Israel from the from the time they left Egypt all the way to they got in the promised land. Christians who get prayers answered. Christians who got love, joy, peace, long suffering. That's the power. That is minus. That is not in hell. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Now it notice it did not say by. His saints. In his saints. The glory of God is our in those that are saved. Because the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ are indwelling in us. When you're truly saved, you've got the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ in you crying out, Abba, Father. Because you are a child of God. And to be admired in all them that believe. So... What marks an unbeliever from a believer? Their attitude to you preaching the gospel. And I've had people in churches we've been in, well, we want to do that, That's, that doesn't work. I want, blah, 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 blah. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, I can maybe question your salvation. Because it says those that don't believe, the unbelievers, are going to give you a hard time. And those that do believe, they're going to be glorified. They're going to be, you're going to be admired. Now they may not do what you're doing, but hey. Wow. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for getting the word out. And then they may grow. They may do what they what God's called them to do. They might, hey, you know what? If that guy can do it, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna do it. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Listen, you guys saw me, Paul, work the work in your life, and you guys just imitated me, and you even grown more than what I've done. So it's the church glory in return. Um... 
So we got two classifications, verse 8, unbelievers, and verse 10, the believers. There's no other else. People want three. They want the middle road. There is none. God is white or it's black. You're saved or you're not saved. Wherefore also we pray, Paul, Savannah, Timothy, and everybody with him, Luke, we pray for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness in the work of faith with power. All right. So Paul is praying. Paul is a prayer warrior. That our God, he's ours, Thessalonians God, he's my God, would count you worthy of this calling. Now, what is the calling? And this calling will turn many Christians away from serving God. What is the calling? Verse 4. The persecution and tribulation. That's a calling of God. Immediately you say, okay, God, you want me to go tell people about Jesus? Yes, I want you to do that. There is a persecution. There's a tribulation to that. I'm going to do it. That's your calling. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. People try to do it without the persecution. There's no way. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. God wants you to have, and God wants to give you, and God wants from you good pleasure. How's that? The world has perverted the pleasure. The carnal church has perverted that pleasure. You know what God wants? You know what makes God happy? Romans chapter 10. When your feet go out there with the gospel, that pleases God. Nothing else. If it's the proclamation, if it's the glorying, if it's the rejoicing, if it's all about his son, Jesus Christ, that is the good pleasure of God. Everything about Jesus that is well and good and profitable, and God says that is the good pleasure. Of his goodness. Who, 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 there's none good. So who, who's the goodness? Jesus Christ. And the work of the faith with power. So faith and power. There's no power, verse 9, to the, to the unbelievers. God has given us the power. Listen, like I said, I'm in my point in the ministry right now is I'm going through different ways. I don't know what the next one right now is. I look at the people and to me, I just like, they're not listening. And sometimes, you know, may just give up. But the power, just keep on doing it. They're listening. They're just blinded. 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 4. Satan is blinded. He's taking that word from their hearts, but they're hearing. Keep going. That's the power. That the name, that the name of our Lord Jesus see, is all about Jesus. All about Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. No other name. May be glorified in you. So God wants you to glorify Jesus in you and around you. And if you lose your job because you are worshiping Jesus Christ, God says, that's good. <laughs> Lord, I lost my... That's good. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of that employer. And when people mock you because you are glorifying Jesus Christ, oh God, I just feel, you know, don't worry. They'll get theirs. What you're doing is a good thing. I'm well pleased. It's about my son. Keep going. And ye in him. You're to be in Christ. According to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it's God and Jesus. Anybody who's against that is our unbelievers. They are enemies of God. Anybody who are believers, they are admired by what you're doing. They are praying for what you're doing. They're, they're, they encourage you to keep on going. And when it's all about Jesus Christ, that's good pleasure. And you look at the churches today, good pleasures to them is, is programs and bouncy houses and all kinds. That's not pleasing God. That's pleasing the flesh. That's not pleasing Jesus. 
any child will say, okay, I'll say this prayer if you give me a Tootsie Roll. Okay, okay. if I get a Tootsie Roll, we're saying, that, okay, I'll do it, no problem. And that's just pleasing the stomach. Mommy says, I got to say this and all that. That's just pleasing your mother. That ain't pleasing Jesus Christ. So, part two or second epistle of Thessalonians, they have improved more. What a remarkable thing.